It's Q and A time, baby girl. Q and A time. Q and A time. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Channel's name is The Third Ernest. I'm Ernest Adiano the Third. Y'all better not be making all this crazy noise the whole time. We just finished our NF train that we went on. And for all of those that are here that subscribed most recently, I just broke 17,000 subscribers. So I really appreciate every single one of y'all that subscribed over the past couple of weeks. And don't worry, just because the NF train where we do consecutive NF songs in a row is over, that doesn't mean NF is going anywhere at all. We still have a lot of songs to cover. We got a whole new album coming out. We got a new single being released this weekend. All that kind of stuff going on. But today, since we're in between artist trains at the moment, we're gonna be doing the Q&A. There was two main categories. There was questions about myself, like who I am, where do I come from, you know, what's my background, all those kind of things. And then there's questions about my personal opinions on musically related topics. So we're gonna have a completely dedicated video specifically for questions about music. But today, y'all guys as my internet family are gonna learn a little bit about me. You know, you subscribe to the channel because y'all guys like the content I put out, but but who is the person in front of the camera when the camera is off, that kind of thing. So, so we're gonna go ahead and get to answering those questions. But first we're gonna start out with, we got Brian McHaney. What does it mean being in the corporate world? I say that in a couple of my videos because my job is a normal corporate world job, corporate America. I work for a bank. I'm currently in training to become a financial advisor. Being in the corporate world means you work for a large corporation in corporate America. So an insurance company, a bank, you got your creative field, which is like this is what YouTube video production houses, photographers, those kind of things, music, musicians. The corporate world though is gonna be the people behind all of that that makes the business tick. So you're talking about your executives, you're talking about bankers, you're talking about anything where people have to wear a suit pretty much is gonna be the corporate world. Next question, we have Cohen Stolk. If I mispronounce these names, my bad. 99% of the people I grew up with are Hispanic, so I can probably read the Hispanic names extremely clearly and perfect. Anything else, who knows? If the doctor told you you only have one week to live, how would that last week look like? What would you do, et cetera, et cetera. To be honest, the last week would probably just be hanging out with family and friends. You know, making memories that obviously when I die, those memories aren't going on with me, but more so memories that they can cherish about who I was and how I was before the end. And believe it or not, I would actually probably still carry a camera, but not so I could take pictures to cherish memories, just so that way people could have pictures of things that we did together in my last week. But that's a deep question. I wasn't expecting that deep of a question for the second question. Next, we have SOC Graffiti. You have a lot of insight into lyrics you listen to, especially with the NF songs. Is that from personal experience, outside experience, or from like higher education? I have a lot of insight in terms of lyrics because I kind of have always had the knack for breaking down literature. Not necessarily breaking down literature, but being able to see through the words, through the lines, and getting the deeper meaning of the books, of the novels, of the poems. A lot of great literature is going to be one big double entendre. So like for example, Animal Farm, which is an iconic, iconic book in American literature. It's literally about a farm, but it's not about a farm. It's about the deeper meaning that the farm represents. I've always kind of had that knack for that. And then I just translated it into music. And that's one of the reasons why I love hip hop and rap so much because of the fact that it's one of the only genres that has that capability of having that type of wordplay, of having those kind of double and triple entendres. You really don't see that with pop music. You don't see that with country. You see that with rock sometimes. Hip hop, especially lyrical hip hop, is one of the only is one of the only genres that does it consistently. It just allows me to appreciate the music so much more. But it's all just from personal experience, really. And in terms of specifically NF's music, um, you know, we all go through those type of experiences, so maybe not to the depths of Nate has gone. I just think that whenever I listen to an artist like NF, I kind of I kind of take my personal mentality and I try to fit into their shoes and see what brought in their life these lyrics about. And that's kind of the reason why I can break them down so good, because I'm not really looking at it from an outside perspective in, I'm trying to look at it as if I was them. That's a good question though, or good multiple questions. Next up, we got Duck Duck Ginger. That's part of the fun about these Q&As, just seeing the names of people. How do you like the food in Texas? I lived in Austin for four years and I miss it. So many good options. First off, the food in Texas is phenomenal. Tex-Mex is its own type of cuisine. It's not Mexican, it's not Texan, it's literally a mixture of both. 
and the fact that you live in Austin, like they got good restaurants up there, but it's Austin. It's gentrified Texas. Like it's not real Tex-Mex. My aunt has lived in Austin her whole life and we go visit frequently and it's just not the same, especially the Mexican food. There's no place better in Texas, personally in my opinion, that has better Mexican food than San Antonio. You get to a border town, it gets too close to being Mexico food. You get to Austin, white people Mexican food. You get to Houston and Dallas, they don't know what the hell's going on Mexican related unless you're in a Mexican part of town. But San Antonio, it's just all over. Like you can be at a taqueria, you can be at a Mexican restaurant, throw a rock in any direction and you'll hit the next Mexican restaurant. That's just as good as the one that you just ate at. Speaking of Austin, in case you didn't know, Austin had the audacity to come out and say that they had the best tacos in all of Texas. And San Antonio was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What the fuck are you talking about, Austin? Your food sucks. Y'all gotta go based off of gimmicks, big ass tacos and things like that. Our shit is just good. And then Austin was like, you wanna have a taco battle or what? And San Antonio was like, say no more fam. You tell me when, you tell me where. And Austin, knowing Austin, oh, oh, we gotta have it in our home turf. And we were like, bitch, that's fine, what's up? We'll go to Austin with our tacos. We created the tacos, we drove them up. Austin didn't even show up to the taco contest that they instigated. They were the ones that said, we would beat you in the taco contest. We said, all right, let's do it. We'll even do it at your place. Didn't even bother showing up. Embarrassing. But yes, Texas food has its own flavor. If you come to Texas and you come to San Antonio for any reason, you wanna go visit the Alamo, you wanna go to the Riverwalk, you wanna go to a Spurs game, whatever, have yourself some breakfast tacos at any taqueria that you find. You won't be disappointed. I do gotta get this cat out of here before he starts. Come here. Get up out of here. He was about to be crying the whole video, I already know. Next, Andrew Blakem, tell us about that tat. That's actually a very common question that I got. There was multiple on this little thing that I screenshot. This tat is what everybody's talking about, one on my right arm. It's a tattoo that I designed and, and I designed it for me and my brother. We both have the same tat, same size, same everything. My dad is extremely strict when it comes to tattoos. Like it took me till I was like 28 years old to get this tattoo only because I was scared of my dad when it came to if I came home with a tattoo. Would I be disowned? I was so uncertain of it that I didn't even want to risk it. Anyway, me and my brother were stepbrothers, completely different, completely different parents. We're both only children from those individual marriages, so we were only children until we came together as stepbrothers. So we got this tattoo to symbolize that. We got the go-ahead from the rents. My brother was like, bro, design that tat. And I was like, all right, but what do we want? And he's like, I don't know. I'm just all about triangles. I don't know why he likes triangles. Probably because Illuminati and it's all, it's all cool in the hip hop world. I like triangles for other reasons. Geometrically, it's like one of the strongest shapes that you can find, which is why when you look inside rafters, it's always triangular shapes because it takes the load that it's bearing and diverts it into two different angles as opposed to just on one. Anyway, that's just something about triangles that you might not have known. But I was like, bet, triangles, let me think. Two weeks trying to figure out what to do with triangles. So basically, I designed this geometrically symmetrical, but unless you know what it is, you're probably not gonna see what it is. So I'm gonna tell you. It's basically two pyramids. This is the base of one pyramid pointing upwards. I don't know if you can see that now that I'm outlining it. Second pyramid, base pointing downward. So this pyramid is technically inverted upside down and it's two support systems on each side. So basically my brother is one pyramid, I'm the other pyramid, and we're holding each other up. I have it on my right arm, he has it on his left arm, he's right-handed, I'm left-handed. It's all kinds of symbolism, double entendres going on within the tattoo. But yeah, that's it. Hope that was as entertaining as you thought it was. Next up, we got Josef Diaz, Joseph Diaz. He says, what religion are you? Roman Catholic, pretty straightforward. Next, we got Shino Chino. Shino Chino, it's one of those two. Or it could be a completely different way that I'm just butchering completely, so my beat. Came from all the NF videos you've been doing, and man, I found some pretty good songs thanks to you just even mentioning M. I could be reading that wrong. He could be saying that he found some pretty good Eminem songs, or he could be saying that he found some pretty good songs by just mentioning them, like mentioning them, but he just shortened it with them. But either way, I'm glad that I could turn you on to some good music because Lord knows we need it today's day and age. What's your dog's name? Simple, but I actually have no clue and they cute AF, bro. Appreciate it. She's right there. I don't know if you can see her. Her name though is Nima. 
Her government name though is Nematep. Greyhounds are said to be in the Bible. They're said to be seen in Egyptian hieroglyphics. So I wanted to pay homage to that Egyptian, Egyptian history. So I looked up Egyptian names and I ended up landing on Nematep, which was an Egyptian queen. Pretty much any Greyhound that I adopt from here on out is gonna have some type of Egyptian name to pay honor to that breed lineage and to that folklore that surrounds the Greyhound breed. Thanks for asking about her. Next, we got Amber Easter Day, Esther Day, yesterday? Just kidding. Not Amber, I think it's Easter Day. Just an observation, why don't you wear glasses? They look great. Well, I started out my channel wearing glasses and I haven't worn them recently because I got LASIK procedure done. My vision is 2010, don't need glasses. I thought about buying some dummy glasses and being that guy. And then I was like, ah, do I really wanna be that guy? And then I was like, who gives a shit if I'm that guy? Do what you wanna do, it's your own life. Don't worry about what other people think. I probably eventually will just get like framed with like no prescription in them just because I can have that stylistic choice of wearing glasses. But obviously not covered by insurance anymore. So I would actually be forking out the cash to buy Ray-Bans or whatever. So I just haven't done it yet. Next we got Reese Nightinger or Nightinger or Ress Nightinger. But we got, what advice do you have to other new YouTubers. YouTube can be an intimidating platform because you see people with numbers in the hundreds of thousands, millions, and you're like, how do they even get there? But if you wanna start your own YouTube channel, find what you're passionate about first and find why you wanna do it. Don't do it for the money because the money's not gonna come. First off, you can't even make money as a brand new YouTuber anymore. I think you have to make a thousand subscribers before you can even be eligible for monetization. Don't even try to do it for the money, do it because it's something that you wanna do. Second, find what you're passionate in and then just go with that. Like I started my channel wanting to make vlogs and I love making vlogs. It's like something that I have a passion for, but my life just wasn't entertaining enough to be able to put a vlog on a consistent basis. And then I got drunk one day at a Mexican restaurant for my goddaughter's like third birthday party or second birthday party. And that's when Eminem came out with Kamikaze and I saw everybody doing their reactions and I was like, they're doing them good? But I personally feel like I could do it better, like breaking down the bars. So I ended up doing that and it got a lot of traction and I was like, okay, well I guess it's mixing my love for hip hop and rap with my want to be a video editor and a YouTuber. That's how the channel landed on to be what it is today. And then the two main tips actually are that, and then the two main tips actually are that when you find what you're passionate about, you have to be consistent on the uploads. The other big thing is that don't feel forced to put out videos at the very beginning. Like make videos just for yourself, like learn how to edit. So don't feel pressured into putting out the very first video you make. Make a video, analyze it, watch it back, find what you don't like about it, learn how to edit better, learn how to story tell better, make another video, it's a little bit better, find what you don't like about it, yada, 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 so on and so forth, until you actually say, okay, I can put out quality enough content. You don't wanna be putting out shitty videos every single day, but you also don't wanna be putting out like, cinematic masterpieces once every three years. You know, you wanna be in a fine balance, so that's what you gotta find. Next, DRFT Jester, Drift Jester, I don't know. You knew a lot about camera angles and NF Wake Up. Did you go to school from that? or learn in another way. So first off, I did not go to school for any kind of camera related anything. I didn't go to school for any kind of creative process. The only classes that I took were electives that were required in college and it was it was drawing one and drawing two. But yeah, everything that I learned was self-taught on YouTube, just doing it in trial and error. I'm talking about hours and hours and hours, just sitting in my room watching videos, going and trying the things that I've learned on those videos, so on and so forth. Also, how did you get started with your channel and what made you decide to do reactions? Oh, I just answered that question, so yeah. So I started my channel, I wanted to do vlogs. I think my very first video on my channel was a vlog. It was a vlog about me moving out of my friend's house into my new apartment, the apartment that you see today. And my reactions were just a drunken spur of the moment thing, my very first one, and it gained traction. That's basically how it happened. Next we got Crystal House. If you could do anything in the world and live your best life, what would it be and why? I will basically be doing what I'm doing now. I'd be doing YouTube, I will be doing photography, I will be doing videography, like actually making videos for clients and things like that, not just for friends. Like my friend is technically a client that I'm going to Houston for, he pays me. But I'm talking about people who don't know me, who find the work that I do worth them spending their thousands of dollars on a video for marketing purposes, things like that. And that's about it. I would actually also start a podcast and I'm probably gonna start doing that with my cousin here soon, as soon as she moves to San Antonio. Next, we got Christian Smith. I've been an NF fan for the better part of the last five years. You are by far the best reaction commentator of his material I've seen so far. I know NF has a lot of depth to his lyrics slash music slash videos that not a lot of people understand that you pull out. What is your background that has helped you get to this point? What helps you break down these videos so well on the first try? The reaction world of YouTube is very heavily saturated because it's so easy to react to things. 
So I decided that I wanted to make my reaction channel a little bit different than normal. I wanted to fully break down these lyrics and I also wanted to incorporate the music videos when I could. The music videos add a lot when it comes to the emotion and when it comes to how I learned how to do it. And when it comes to how I learned how to do it, it's kind of a two part answer. I've always loved to study movies and how certain lighting and how certain editing and things like that play a part in the movie. Because at the end of the day, the editor is God in a movie production. Like the director can choose whatever angles he wants on the cameras, the director of photography can choose how he wants the mood and the scene to look you know what type of vibe he wants the scene to give but at the end of the day it's the editor that's making the decisions whether to add those in or cut them out so I've always thought that that was fascinating that the editor doesn't get as much credit as the other two but really they're the ones that determine the pace and the flow of the movie and when it comes to how I learned how to do it it's learning by doing basically when I started my YouTube channel it was all based off of vlogs and when it comes to vlogs you don't want to just point the camera at yourself and just say what you're doing you need to learn how to tell a story without actually verbally telling the story you had to learn how to use different angles to make your your life look more cinematic and make it look more interesting than it actually might be if you were to just point the camera out and shoot. And then editing it all together to provide some type of entertainment, all three of those skills are completely different things. So you learn as you do. You're like, oh, okay, this is why Casey Neistat does this in a certain way because if I didn't do this in my video, it would be dull or it would be plain or what have you. But that's basically it. It's all just self-taught, like I said before. And what helps me break them down so well on the first try is that I'm actually paying attention to the music video. I'm not just listening to the music. And when you're watching a music video, especially someone who uses a lot of symbolism like NF, you want to be watching the entire music video. You don't want to just focus on him. You want to look at the background. You want to look at the foreground. You want to look at all the elements within the frame and decide what's happening. If you just pay attention to the artist, that's all you're going to see. Good question though. Crispy Jimmy. How about a face reveal? Boom. I'm not how to basic. This is my face. It's a face for radio. I know, no big deal. Brick Wall says, you seem to key in really well on visual elements of music videos. What is your experience in photography and film? No experience in film and photography related. I've been taking pictures since I could hold a camera and learn how to work an SLR camera. A lot of people say photography is a dying breed. It's not necessarily a dying breed. It's just bad photography is everywhere. And it's not bad photography. It's just what's called quote unquote snapshot photography. You take your phone, you take a picture while you're out, what have you. You don't think about the composure. You don't think about anything. When I take pictures, I think, like, is this picture good enough to even go on my wall? People's feet are cut out of the picture, that's bad. Too much headspace, that's bad. Not using great composition, that's bad. And you learn these things over time, and really the only way to learn is to get behind the camera, take shitty pictures, and then learn from them. The good thing about photography is that good photography stands out really easily amongst bad photography. So if you just learn how to up your photography game slightly, your pictures are just gonna be so much better. For people that have kids, get eye level with your kids, stop taking pictures from the top down. For people that are taking photos of other people, don't cut off their feet and leave a crazy amount of headspace. Like, bring the frame down, get the whole body into the picture. Don't cut off people at their joints, it makes it look like they're missing limbs. If you cut somebody off, cut them off in the middle of the arm and the bicep area, things like that. And, and just watch tutorials, watch videos. That's the good thing about YouTube. You got, you got photography channels everywhere. My favorite photography channels are Mango Street, Julia Trotti, who's a portrait photographer, Evan Ramped, who's a product and street photographer, F-Stoppers, if you wanna see critiques on why people who have been in the industry don't like certain pictures or why they think certain pictures are better than others. Those are the main four photography channels that I watch every single video. Evan Ramped, Julia Trotti, Mango Street, F-Stoppers. I'm gonna butcher this one big time. Adagia, Adagia, Adagia. What's something that represents you as a whole in your life? I would probably say my camera, as cliche as that sounds. It allows me to express myself in ways that most people can't express themselves. It allows me to stop moments in time and cherish those things for basically as long as a digital file is allowed to be cherished for, which is pretty much forever. I can make videos about my life that I can play back and things like that. Back in the day when iPods existed, I would have I would have said it was my iPod because obviously music is something that I'm extremely passionate about. That's a great question, trying to put your life into a material object. It's pretty tough. Are you done eating so that way I could do this in peace and silence? Appreciate you. Ralph Inwa or Ralph Noah or Ralph Inoa asked, if you could go back in time in your life and talk to your past self, what time slash event would you visit and what would you tell yourself? Now we're getting super meta. I would probably go back in time, not a specific event, but to a point in my life, like high school time probably, and just tell myself two things. One, have more confidence in yourself and who you are. Like I was never the best looking kid in high school. You know, I was really skinny. I was, I was like 5'10 going into freshman year, weighing like 130. 
So I was basically a twig. I put on a decent amount of weight since then only because I don't work out and I'm basically fat now. I look back at pictures when I wasn't and I'm like, oh, that's why people tell me that I need to eat and put on weight. But I just didn't have a whole lot of confidence in who I was. I wasn't really vocal and I was vocal amongst my friends. I was the funny guy, I was the class clown. I was the person who had, had the sharp wit, but I was never really someone whose presence was felt. Like, like if I could think of a character on TV or, or in movies who I wish I had the confidence and just that presence around, would be Don Draper from Mad Men. He just has that natural, not necessarily charisma, but just the in-room presence. Like when you're in his presence in the show, you know that he's in the scene. And number two would be to not let people waste my time. I've wasted my time in relationships. I've wasted my own time by not just jumping in. Like this channel, I would have started it probably three, four years ago if I didn't just waste my time by saying, oh, you can do it later. Oh, you're never gonna get to the point where these other big YouTubers are. Again, going back to self-confidence. It's the most frustrating thing looking back on. But I mean, you end up being the person you are because of those mistakes that you made. So I might not even be the person I am today if I was able to change that and go back. But if I could, those would be the two things that I would do. Next, uh, feline intuition. This is somebody who actually comments on my videos quite often. Your comment about mental health seems to come more from just reading about it. Does it hit close to home? If so, do you wanna tell us more about it? I personally don't have any necessarily mental health issues. I do have anxiety. I do have anxiety, but it's not necessarily the same type of anxiety that people think of when they think about an anxiety disorder. I get anxiety about migraines that I get. The migraines that I get, they're not debilitating in the sense that like I gotta sleep for three days and just be shut off. The migraines that I get, they actually aren't very painful at all. The pain is very dull. It's just like a normal headache, but they do come with like facial tingling. They come with like facial numbness sometimes. I lose the ability to balance myself. There's, there's like impairment things that go on it's a weird type of migraine that you get and that's really what it's classified as and I couldn't believe it was classified as that when the doctor told me I get anxious about those things because of the fact that I am here by myself so if so if the feeling of passing out that comes with these migraines that I get actually did turn into me passing out like there's nobody here there's nobody here to like wake me up but there's nobody here to drive into the hospital there's nobody here to wake me up there's nobody here to watch after me i get anxious about that fact and then it like just compounds itself like oh there's nobody here anxious oh even more anxious and then anxious 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 to the point where i have been hospitalized because of the fact that this anxiety attack kind of stemmed from nowhere. But I do know that it is a serious thing that isn't taken seriously enough. It's frustrating when people think that it's not as serious as it is. If I told you I got migraines, the first thing you're gonna think is painful to the point where I have to be in bed, lights off three days. When I tell you that's not the case, you're gonna be confused. And if I tell you that I could be awake and I can, I just can't drive, I can't focus, I get anxiety, I'm dizzy, you're gonna be like, well, just stop thinking about it. It's not that simple. And I feel like people who go through mental health issues, they get that all the time. Just because you can't see what's going on doesn't mean something's not going on. So it's important to me that I say those things as much as possible so that way people realize that what I'm going through and what other people go through on a more serious basis. So the more that I can say that and get it out there, that's why I bring it up as much as I do. Mire, Mirai, Mire, Carmonia, Caramonia. One of those, she says, where are you from originally? Born and bred Texas, baby. I only wasn't born in San Antonio because my father was in the Air Force. He was stationed at Dias Air Force Base, which is in Abilene, Texas, about five and a half hours from San Antonio. I was born at Dias Air Force Base for the grand old price of like $24. Thanks, Air Force. But yeah, born, bred, raised Texas. I'm Texan all the way through and through. Ironically, I actually don't like UT Longhorn football. I feel like their fans are just mad annoying. Next, we have LaDonna Tilly. Looks like it's pronounced LaDonna. Best reactions I have seen or heard has been on your channel. I really appreciate that, by the way. I've been following rap since the 90s, same. Minus mumbo jumbo or gold grills or chains. Same, even though gold grills and chains, it's kind of a Southern thing. So I kind of had to follow that because H-Town, you know what I'm saying? What's your educational background or music history? First online thing I did was give my computer aids with Napster and Kazaa and LimeWire. But yeah, that's it. I don't, I don't really have any musical history other than the fact that I care deeply about what the lyrics say. And I was obsessed and I still am obsessed about learning like the underlying meaning of what these songs are saying. And a lot of these artists, they're very poetic in the way that they write. They don't get the shine that they deserve 
serve in terms of poetry and things like that because they're putting their poetry on the stigma of music. So whether that be rock music, like Incubus, Brandon Boyd, in my personal opinion, is one of the best songwriters in terms of lyrics and what the lyrics mean and the way he puts songs together. And then Lupe Fiasco is someone that I quote often. Like if Lupe Fiasco wasn't a rapper, if he was just an author, we would be studying this dude's poems in universities in American literature. Guaranteed. Some of his songs go so deep. Lone Star Beer, are you a Texan or Southwest area? Texan all day, baby. Lone Star Beer, originally brewed in San Antonio, Texas. The brewery is shut down now, but it's not demolished. It's still standing. I think now it's brewed in Dallas, Texas, if I'm not mistaken. It's great that you adopted a Greyhound. One of my favorite dogs was a Greyhound mix. We'll adopt one again someday. Keep the great channel going. Ever since I was financially capable of supporting my own animal, I've wanted a Greyhound. I didn't want the stereotypical golden retriever or German shepherd or something on the top list of like most popular dogs. And I like the fact that I could adopt, you know, first off, get a purebred dog for 300 bucks. And second, more importantly, adopt. And that's really important to me is that people adopt dogs. Next question, Carter Anderson, you married? Psh, married to the streets, married to the game. Now I'm saying, Ziad Halal, Ziad Halal. How did you decide to open this channel? Just said, fuck it. I'm gonna do it, it's free 99. Besides the camera equipment, there's no charge to be on YouTube. There's no charge to upload a video. There's no reason to not do it. If you have the urge, do it. And could you make reactions for any other type of music? Do you like 21 Pilots, bro? I actually haven't ever listened to 21 Pilots because they're so radio heavy that I never gave them the time of day because I've explained it in other videos. When something is hyped up and when something's on the radio and it's hype, I'm done in the hype. I'm not really a fan of hype because most people can't live up to it. That's one of the reasons I never listen to NF. But people have told me to listen to 21 Pilots, so I guess I'm gonna have to to see what it's about. And could I make reactions for any other type of music? I plan on doing reactions to rock and country because I grew up on both of those as well. Country for sure, and not new country. New country is trash. I'm talking about like 90s, 2000s country, Garth Brooks, George Strait, Alan Jackson, you know, those kind of country artists. That's where I'm about. Tiffany Fountain, Fountain, one of my OG subscribers, like under a thousand subs, under 500 subs maybe. I'm gonna go for a deep question, a real thinker. Let's go, let's see what we got. Would you rather have one nipple or two belly buttons? That's actually a really solid question. Is the nipple dead center? Cause if the nipple's dead center, that's weird. Cause now we got like a cave as a belly button and then we got like a little hill as a nipple, all in line. We got a little triangle vibe going on whenever you have two nipples and one belly button. So I would probably say if the nipple is off center, like if I just lost one nipple or if it just didn't grow, I'd probably say one. If I was a female, my answer would probably be two belly buttons because I need two nipples if the breastfeeding thing ever came into play. But two belly buttons, now I just got extra lint for no reason down there. Now I gotta clean two belly buttons, too much hassle. Nipple way easier, way less maintenance. Great question though. Counter, I guess that's how it's pronounced, is next. How did you grow up and when did you really get into rap and lyricism? I grew up in a very strict household as a single child. A lot of people have the stigma that single children get whatever they want, get everything that they want because they're spoiled and they have no other reason. Let me tell you, that was not the case in my household. I was hit with a belt as a child, I was spanked, I was in trouble when I needed to be in trouble. I grew up in a very modest household, I did not have name brand things. I didn't get my first pair of Nikes until seventh grade and I only got them because I was playing on the basketball team. Anything that was name brand in my household was sports related because there's a high risk for injury. So you get better quality things so that you don't twist your ankle, so that you don't break your, so you don't break your wrist or what have you. But every everyday clothes, everything like that, very basic. Walmart, and I'm glad to say that I learned from that. Like there's no reason for a kid to have those kind of things. Obviously, if you can afford it, great, by all means do so but kids gonna grow out of it, kids gonna fuck it up, kids gonna get it dirty, gonna stain it. They're, it's just not worth it in my personal opinion after living that life. But yeah, my household was very strict. Had a strict bedtime, couldn't watch certain things, couldn't listen to certain music, and that's probably one of the reasons why rap and hip hop appealed to me so much because I wasn't because I wasn't technically allowed to do that. But the main thing is that whenever I acted out, I was disciplined. I was disciplined hard. If I acted out, and I don't know if this is just me, it's probably not because I know my cousins grew up like this as well and it might just be our family. I would have to go and get the belt that I was gonna be hit with. Hey, hey, go get the belt that I'm gonna spank you with. By the way, flat belts hurt more than braided ones in case anybody's ever wondering. I appreciate growing up in that strict of a household. I appreciate being hit. I didn't like it at the time, obviously, but it made me grow my thick skin. It made me grow the personality I have and the sharp wit and the humor and the fact that not 
not a lot gets to me. And that's one of the reasons why whenever I say things on this channel or one of the reasons why I have like a sharp tongue or I have like a quick wit or I say things that might be seen as offensive, I don't find these things offensive because I grew up in a household that disciplined. I grew up in a household that I needed to have strength in. I'm technically a millennial, but these younger millennials that grew up with the internet, I don't fuck with them too heavy because a lot of them are bitches. Anyway, next we got Katia Reyes. Katia Reyes? Katia Reyes? Are you taken? Psh, I don't know. Streets got my heart, game got my soul. One time's the sunshine will never hurt your soul. Quote, to a crying dishonored baby mama who's the mama to a daughter that I had fathered from afar. My new lady gave me a Mercedes and a necklace with a solid gold key like the starter of a car, the opener of a door, or two pounds of raw. You gave me a baby, but what about lately? Ha 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 ha. Right up in her face, G, there's more fish in the sea. I'm on my mission to be the coolest. That's the coolest by Lupe Fiasco, and we're gonna get in that song, because that song is fire. But not really, anytime I get into a relationship, something goes south, or my time is taken up, my time is already taken up by doing other things. And I think this is gonna be the last question for right now. It's uh, B.H. Brack, B. Brack. What's your education background? Because you're probably the most intelligent reaction video YouTuber I've seen. Really appreciate that, that's a big compliment. Your broad in-depth knowledge makes your interpretation of lyrics top notch, but it can come off as educational, which is entertaining. Thank you, and my educational background is literally just some college. I never found my way in college, I never found the major that I wanted to fall in. English major, would have been in debt, making no money. Pre-med major, I aced all of my biological science classes. Chemistry related, math related classes, I suck at math so I couldn't really do that. If it was all biology, I'd be a doctor right now, but it's not. You have to go through the chemistry side. I just couldn't. I wanna get a degree for myself. I wanna get a degree so that way I can show my kids that I went to college and so my dad can say, oh, my son graduated from college, things like that. But just after all these years, it just might not be me. Like there's nothing in college that I would wanna do that's worth me going into that debt. And I don't mind student debt if I got a degree and that degree translated into me making money in a field that I was passionate about. But everything that I'm doing creative wise, which is really what I'm passionate about, is about creativity. There's nothing in college that I needed to go to college to do. Like I said, all of this right here is self-taught. All y'all think that I have all this knowledge about these things, it's because I have the passion enough to spend the hours and put in the work. I don't need to go to college to do those things. And I'm not trying to tell people to not go to college because it's definitely higher education is something that you should have. But college isn't gonna be the route for everybody. Some people wanna go the hard labor route. Some people wanna be welders who make $90,000. Some people wanna be construction and framers and own a framing business who make $150,000 owning the business. You don't need to necessarily go to college for all that, you just gotta put in the work. It all just depends on what your goal is to do. If you wanna be in corporate America, if you wanna be in management, you wanna be in upper management, you wanna be CEO, CFO, yes, college is gonna be an absolute necessity for that type of position. If you wanna be a big budget movie director, movie producer, director of photography, sometimes college and film school is going to help that. But not everybody is gonna be destined for college and not everybody needs college to be successful. And that's what I realized after the fact. Really find what you're passionate about. And if your passion leads you to the path of college where you need to go to college, like I have a lot of friends who are speech pathologists. You can't get a job being a speech pathologist without going to college. A lot of people wanna be detectives in their police force. You have to have a master's degree in criminal justice in order to do that. You wanna be a teacher, you have to have a degree in order to teach in Texas. There's a lot of positions out there that do require college, but just the same, there's a lot that don't. So there's many routes to take. You just gotta find, you just gotta find what route you wanna take. But I appreciate y'all guys for all those questions. I think I only got through half. This video is probably mad long. So there's gonna be another video for sure. But everybody that made it this far, thanks for watching. Everybody who submitted their questions for me to answer, thank you for submitting those questions. It really, It's really the only way this video could have been made. If I didn't get to your question, no frets. Chances are I'm gonna have to get to it on the next video. But I appreciate everybody. Go out there, spread love, positivity in the world. Love and care for one another, like I always say. In case anybody wonders where that came from, I was at EDC the first year I ever went, drunk AF. And I look and on the billboard at EDC, it said love and care for each other. And there was just this electronic music playing, everybody's just happy, everybody's friends, even though you don't know these strangers, you feel like they're your friends because you have something in common. I was like, damn, this is one of the most perfect moments I've ever had. So ever since I read that billboard, that's like something I try to keep in the back of my mind. Thanks for being here once again. See y'all on the next video. Peace.